and welcome to Part 22, my report on the McCarrick Report by Patrick Parson. As we continue Chapter 8 of the McCarrick Report, Tenure as Archbishop of Newark, 1986-2000, to 2000, we are struck immediately by the amount of time Archbishop McCarrick spends away from his diocese traveling all around the world on various church missions. During this time he rises in prominence and increases his network among both religious and political leaders. In addition to traveling for the church, McCarrick also served the United States government in various roles during the 1980s and 1990s. In 1987, he was appointed an observer to the American Helsinki Commission to review progress of the Helsinki Accords. Now, if you are wondering what the Helsinki Accords are, as I was, the report does not go into that, but the Helsinki Accords, or Helsinki Pacts, was an agreement signed in 1975 by 35 countries in an effort to build detente between the Soviet Communist Bloc and the West. Detente, of course, being the easing of relations between two countries. Or more countries. So obviously McCarrick was getting involved in some fairly high-powered assignments. McCarrick was also named a Commissioner of the Federal Commission on Immigration and Economic Policy and was on the U.S. State Department Advisory Committee on Religious Freedom. In fact, the U.S. State Department even issued McCarrick a diplomatic passport for his government work overseas. McCarrick even traveled to Red China on behalf of the United States, where as part of a delegation, McCarrick also discussed possible normalization of relations between China and the Holy See with Chinese President Jiang Zemin. And speaking of the Holy See, McCarrick became part of several Holy See commissions in the 1980s and 90s. He was named a consultor to the Pontifical Commission of Pastoral Care of Migrants and Tourists, the Pontifical Commission for the Preservation of the Artistic and Historic Patrimony of the Holy See, and he was Vice President of the Synod for America's Message Commission. Pope John Paul II also appointed McCarrick to the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace. McCarrick also did an amount of traveling in order to be where Pope John Paul II was making pastoral visits, including Albania, Colorado, Lithuania, Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, France, Cuba, Mexico, and the Holy Land. McCarrick wrote what was described as a significant volume of letters, unquote, to the Holy Father, especially when he was traveling. One Vatican official thought McCarrick, and I quote, saw himself acting as a sort of intermediary for the Church with political leaders in the United States and around the world, unquote. Another official described McCarrick as a prolific writer who often wrote directly to the Holy Father. The official also expressed the opinion that McCarrick, quote, was on the one hand, objectively, doing things that were important. On the other hand, he was making sure that the Pope understood that he was doing things that were important, unquote. 
So what have we learned so far about McCarrick? He became a familiar name both in Catholic commissions and with the U.S. State Department. McCarrick was not afraid to take on new roles and responsibilities. In fact, he seemed to look for opportunities to find more positions, even if they were not always official. And as it has been suggested, McCarrick was not afraid to let people know how significant his activities and accomplishments were. In our next segment, we will look briefly at the subject of gift-giving and fundraising, and hopefully after that, we can find out how his poor Archdiocese of Newark is surviving without his constant presence there. Now, one constant need we have is God's continued forgiveness and understanding. Please join me in the Fatima prayer as we seek salvation for both ourselves and others. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. <laughs> 